Now, if I make the statement, golf is hard, I think it's fair to say we could all agree in the comment section below that yes, Andy, we agree with you. The thing is, I also believe that we as golfers make it as hard as we possibly can. And I'm going to show you what I mean by that. Now, that's a seven iron. It's got a KBS Tour 120 gram stiff shaft in it. Now, the reason this shaft is in this club is because relative to what I've always learned and been told in terms of my swing speed, and this is about where I should be in terms of the shaft in my irons. But I'm starting to question that a little. And this is a seven iron with a 40 gram light graphite shaft in it. Huge difference in weight. But what actually happens in terms of the difference in performance? And that's the question I'm raising in today's video. And it's got some real interesting answers. Okay, so not only is there a huge difference in terms of the weight of the shaft, in terms of the flex of the shaft, there's also three quarters of an inch difference in terms of length of shaft. And that being 36.25 in the seven iron with the graphite shaft in and 37 inches with that of that KBS Tor steel. The question I have for you at this point in the comment section below is please let me know what you think are gonna be the results in terms of performance in my hands. Now the first thing to do, I would encourage everybody at some time if you get the opportunity is to try opposite ends of the spectrum, which is really what this is. Because trust me, I started by swinging this 40 gram shaft as light of a shaft as I've ever tried in a golf club. And then I switched it up to this 120 gram shaft. As you can imagine, there is a significant difference in the way they feel. In fact, I didn't really realize how heavy, if that's right, the right word, the 120 gram shaft was, but it plays a significant difference in how, first of all, you swing the club and how you attack the golf ball. And what I mean by that is that this club, this shaft rather, is designed for me swinging at full tilt, if you like. Now, if I'm swinging a seven iron at about 84, 85 miles per hour with this 120 gram shaft, I'm gonna make sure I continue to swing at that speed. Otherwise, well, things don't go quite to plan. And it's fine, it's a good shaft. It's what I've used over the years or something very, very similar. I'm more than comfortable with that shaft. But what it means is every time I step up to the ball, I feel like I've got to sort of, I've got to be full on in terms of the swing. I'm gonna struggle with the explanation on this one, but bear with me. And then I switch into this 40 gram shaft, which to be quite honest with you, when you go from one to the other, this almost feels like a toy golf club. That's the only way I could describe it. I'm all of a sudden just for three quarters of an inch, I'm a lot closer to the ball than I would expect to be with a seven iron. And what happens is subconsciously, I swing the club a lot lighter. What that also then does is my tempo and rhythm just slows down. My breathing slows down. Everything becomes at a much slower pace. And what I've said to Hannah off camera is I can't believe that, like I said, subconsciously, everything just becomes so much more rhythmical. The timing becomes better. The strike becomes better. But what happens in terms of performance? What does this tell us? Does performance become better? I feel like Ernie L swinging this at the minute. So let me start by telling you that this shaft is in a ladies golf club, but sent to us for some other testing that we're about to do later on today. It is in the new tailor-made Kalia range, which is a superb set of ladies golf clubs. And like I said, there's a real interesting video to follow, but I picked up this club to have a go myself earlier this morning. I was impressed with the way things happened. Like I said, tempo changed. I seem to be hitting down the middle. I seem to be swinging very easy indeed and performance seemed good. We hooked it up to uh, GC3. The performance numbers suggested it was doing pretty good as well. We then go and get the other seven iron from another range with a 120 gram shaft in and all of a sudden questions are being raised yet again. How much harder is it to swing with that 120 gram shaft than it is to swing with this 40 gram shaft? And am um, I, and maybe you, making a huge mistake by ignoring this kind of thing? We're gonna take it out on the golf course next, and I just wanna see in reality what happens. Can I hit the ball as consistently as I have done inside? And then I'll reveal that dry ball data and a big surprise for you. 
Right, so out here on the course of Carden Park, I want to find one thing, and that's can I take the form, the performance that I got out of these golf clubs or this shaft at least from inside out here on the golf course in reality? Because if I can, then there's a real question mark over what shaft I would always use compared to a 40 gram light shaft that is also three quarters of an inch shorter than my normal. Now I normally leave dry ball data until the very end, but I think it's an opportune moment to throw it up now. We've come actually to ladies tee because we're 146 from the flag, which is perfect for this seven iron. In fact, dry ball data suggested that there is not a great deal to split these in two in terms of how they perform distance wise, because ultimately one hit the ball a little bit higher in terms of the launch conditions, also spun a little bit more, which is this Kalea iron. And the other, like I said, was lower spinning lower launching and a little bit longer but the consistency from the Kalea was the bit that impressed me and it's that ability to swing the club with a little less effort a little more concentration on timing and rhythm and tempo that produced far more consistent results than I would ever expected with a 40 gram light shaft in hand I'm amazed at how steady these were, so much so we're also filming another video of a full bag of these things from putter through to driver with 40 gram shafts in and that's also extremely interesting. I think you should just stop very briefly and talk about the actual product that I'm using and that's this tailor-made Kalea range and like I said we're going to play a round or nine holes at least with a full set. It's essentially a game improvement iron, sort of thick uh, top line and a wider sole it's a really good performing game improvement style iron. It does the job extremely well. The loft on this head is 32 degrees, so much more like the sort of traditional lofts that we would be uh, associated seven iron with. And like I said, overall just performs incredibly well. I just want to go back to that previous hole. I ended up hitting a second shot because it was at 146 on the range finder. And that was on the limits in terms of the dry ball data we'd collected. So I kind of like just forced that first one a little bit down the left and it went left and long as well. So there's clearly distance in these if you want to force the issue, but that is totally against the grain of what I would be trying to do in terms of playing golf with this kind of setup. The second shot I hit was again going back to that concentration that I've waffled on about, which is concentrating on tempo and timing the ball finished pin high the ball didn't deviate in terms of left or right it was just a straight shot and i think that's what you've also got to sort of tell yourself consistently to make sure you understand what it is you're trying to do with this uh, shaft in hand you certainly can't or shouldn't be wanting to try and go after shots and it, it teaches you a great deal of uh, well it teaches you a lesson really about concentrating like i said on that timing Well, I think that's, I don't need to see any more. That's another iron straight down the middle of the fairway, no deviation in terms of ball flight. So what have I learned from today's video? Well, I think that I hope you've learned as well is that never dismiss anything. This is a ladies club essentially with a 40 gram light flex shaft in it. It shouldn't be in my hands, but it is. And it's performed as good as I've any, ever tested out here on the golf course. And that's largely because I think that I've found the centre of the club face more often than not. And I've achieved that by the fact that tempo, timing, rhythm has been key to my swing. And also maybe that shorter shaft has meant there's greater control and therefore I'm finding the centre of that club face a little bit more. I don't know what the video started off being. I literally hit these things for perhaps a bit of a laugh early on in the uh, this morning and realised uh, perhaps I'm not taking these as serious as I should have done. So if you're a man out there that's considering looking at a new set of irons, wants a bit of help with launch, wants to concentrate on just a nice, slow, smooth swing, then all I can advise is when you next go for your custom fit, ask can you try something down the lighter end of the spectrum and perhaps a graphite shaft and just see how your club performs in your hands with that, uh, I think, a great deal of assistance with that lighter shaft. It certainly hasn't affected my performance one bit today. In fact, perhaps just the opposite. Right, as ever, let me know your own experiences. Have you found the same or have you found different? Guide your fellow golfers by uh, putting some constructive feedback down below. And uh, I'm pretty much done for the day. A gorgeous day here at Carden Park. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all soon.